How's it going friends? Right now I am up in the East Bench neighborhood where there are some of the coolest homes in Salt Lake City proper. And then basically all down here is East Bench and Sunnyside East. We're combining them for today's video just kind of because of proximity, them being fairly similar and kind of too small to do on their own video. That said, I'm excited to share it with you. Beautiful spots. Should we, should we just go? Just let me just. How's it going my friends? My name is Jesse Lynch and I work with the hardest working real estate team in the game. We're called Welcome to Salt Lake City and you can check out our website, welcome to saltlakecity.co. But this YouTube channel is all about helping you find a place to call home, a place to land here in beautiful, so beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. And that is whether you are buying a house for the first time or relocating here from a different city, state, country, planet, maybe dimension or universe, uh, however it is, relocations and first time home buyers that's what we do and that's what we do better than anybody else so if either of those two things appeal to you then subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified so you can see every time we put out these videos we do our best to put out the most immersive you know just in-depth honest videos anywhere on the internet so i think uh yeah if this is up your alley Go ahead and while you're at it, if you would not mind, I would appreciate it very much if you give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment of any sort at all. That's helpful, not only to this video, not only to this channel, but other folks like yourself who maybe are in the same position, maybe thinking about moving here, maybe thinking about buying a house. You feel, okay. And as always, if you are thinking about moving here, then get a hold of us and we will crush it for you. Make the process as easy as possible on you. We have this down, we have systems in place and we really just have this process figured out and you know we can work through the nuance and the things that are maybe a little more complicated about relocations and first-time home buyers than you know other situations so go to our website welcome salt lake city.co we have a contact form there that you can fill out literally will take 30 seconds uh, or you can shoot us an email directly to info at welcome to salt lake city.co and yeah they lead to the same spot the same inbox so fully up to you how you do it uh yeah live your life do your thing and either way we'll react accordingly and you know get you set up Today's video, we're talking East Bench and Sunnyside East. Right now I'm in the East Bench neighborhood. It's beautiful. There's so many, so many incredible homes up here. The East Bench neighborhood is pretty much entirely at in the foothills of the Wasatch Mountains, you know, on the, the Eastern border, kind of obvious, of Salt Lake City proper. Again, epic views, you know, it's a little hard to see, but epic views of downtown and yeah, the Ochre Mountains, so, so beautiful. Some of the best sunsets anywhere in Salt Lake City, even along the Wasatch Front, super great spot. I'm excited to show you around a little bit more. We're also hopping over to Sunnyside East, which is just to the north of here, uh, basically between East Bench and maybe like the university area. But I'm excited to share it with you. I love this area. First time I ever came here, it was like, dang. I wanna live there someday. <laughs> so yeah, super cool. And I think a lot of y'all are gonna enjoy it. Let's go. All right, y'all, I'm at Donner Trail Park, uh, basically connected to Rotary Glen Park. 
It's a it's a great little municipal park. It's actually not that little. It's very long. Uh, it stretches pretty much from kind of the tip of the East Bench neighborhood and goes all the way down uh, sort of Emigration Canyon, pretty much to where the neighborhood ends, or I guess it turns into sort of the zoo, right? So if I keep walking this way, I would basically eventually make my way to Utah Zoo. Uh, and yeah, these neighborhoods are really great, mostly residential neighborhoods. There's some commercial stuff. There's, you know, pretty decent park space. This is, yeah, again, pretty big park. Um, and then there's the zoo, but that's pretty much it. Uh, it has collectively between the two neighborhoods, there are some very, very beautiful views. And yeah, uh, East High School, it was uh, in High School Musical, which I haven't seen, but I, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, geographically speaking, you know, if I show you basically right back here, right is is downtown we're we're all the way east so we're getting a little bit further away from the downtown core but still pretty close maybe 15 minutes to downtown salt lake you know from basically just about anywhere in either one of these neighborhoods and you know the airport is further to the west than downtown so that's maybe 22 25 minutes from these areas as well and I think I can go down here and show you a little bit. Basically right down here is Emigration Canyon, which uh, is big for like cyclists and, you know, runners and stuff like that. There's also a pretty good amount of wildlife and naturally the canyon works its way up through the mountains, right? Uh, there's actually some sort of apartments and I think condo buildings that I think you can see right over here. Pretty tremendous views for an apartment building. So this is fundamentally Emigration Canyon and yeah, nice spot. And it's kind of cool that this park has views of it as well. As far as the borders are concerned, I'm gonna lump these two neighborhoods into the same uh, thing because they otherwise they border each other, right? To the north, uh, you have the University neighborhood, just to the north of Sunnyside East. To the east, fundamentally just the Wasatch Mountains. To the south, that's a little complicated. Uh, there's partly Arcadia Heights, which is basically just really epic homes, right? We, I, maybe I'll do a video on that. Maybe I'll do a short or something like that. I'm curious if y'all would be interested in, please leave a comment about this. Truly, truly curious if you'd be interested in shorts where it's just B-roll, right? Where it's just like the vibe of the area. Maybe like a three minute video of, hey, here's what this place feels like. Uh, maybe set to music, but you can just kind of like look at it. I don't know. So then the other sort of neighborhood to the south would basically be uh, Sugar House, maybe uh, technically a little bit of like Bonneville Hills would fall in there. And then to the west, you're gonna have Yale Crest, Bonneville Hills and Sugar House, fundamentally. The population of East Bench, pretty good, like 6,500, which, you know, it's a decent sized landmass. And then I think the reason, the big reason that we're sort of clumping these together is the population of Sunnyside East is 692, right? It's a decent sized landmass, but a huge chunk of it <laughs> is taken up by the zoo. Uh, and yeah, there's just not that many homes there. So again, it would be one of those spots where if we did a virtual tour, it'd be tough. It just, there wouldn't be enough, you know, interesting stuff to look at. As far as schools are concerned, schools here generally pretty good. You're naturally, you're getting uh, Salt Lake City Public School District, which, you know, is, uh, always say this, I think, is the most diverse school district in all of Utah. And you're looking at an average score of somewhere around a B plus for pretty much all the schools here. You have Highland High School, which serves the majority of East Bench, right? And that's probably, that is the better of the high schools. Um, it does not serve Sunnyside East, but so if you're in East Bench, you have access to Highland High School, which gets an A minus. And then most of Sunnyside East is gonna be served by East High School, home of High School Musical, I think. 
think, or at least part of it. And then when you switch over to middle schools, sort of the, the grade uh, switches, right, from the A minus being the, the high school that serves East Bench, the A minus school is the one that serves <laughs> Sunnyside East, which is Clayton Middle School. And then there's a B plus rated middle school called Hillside Middle School that serves fundamentally all of East Bench. And then when it comes to elementary schools, uh, Indian Hills Schools is an A minus and serves both. So I, I feel like the B plus rating, I'm like, I don't know, it almost sounds a little more like an A minus to me, but you know, take that for what you will. Again, sometimes the the grading is, uh, is, I don't know, a little bit subjective or who knows exactly what they're using to come up with those grades. But I do think it's helpful and it is pretty indicative of the quality of the school in general. So I always like to include that. In terms of housing for Sunnyside East and East Bench, they are going to be fairly similar medians. Sunnyside East is gonna be a little cheaper, but also think about way fewer homes there. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's not many homes, but uh, there are some really great ones. It's ten generally gonna be a bit cheaper, which makes sense to me because most of East Bench is truly up on this bench area with incredible views. So that said, median sale price in East Bench, 900,000. Median sale price of Sunnyside East, 840,000. So not a huge difference. Um, and it's interesting to sort of note like just how how impressive the views are going to be in East Bench versus you know the the homes in Sunnyside East for the most part are going to be a little more down in the valley still have cool views and might even have more sort of impressive views of the Wasatch Mountains because you don't really have views of the Wasatch Mountains in East Bench because you're on them right that said, and this is just food for thought, it's not scientific particularly, but the cheapest home on the market right now in East Bench, the cheapest single family is 350,000, which I don't, that's kind of staggering. Uh, I, I, my assumption is it's something like a teardown or uh, needs a lot of work. Uh, the most expensive home is 2.2 million. And then there's literally only one home on the market <laughs> right now uh, in Sunnyside East. Again, very small inventory there. And it's currently 1.3 million. That said, there obviously are cheaper homes. I would just suspect that the higher the price goes, the longer it sits on the market in kind of both of these areas. So you're more likely to find an active listing at a uh, you know, higher price point because otherwise stuff's gonna be going fast because they're very desirable areas. And then one interesting note is that according to niche.com, 100% of the people who live in Sunnyside East own the home they live in. 0% renters, whereas East Bench, 15% renters and 85% owners. So that's interesting, but also when you just think about how much more housing stock there is in East Bench, I guess maybe it doesn't surprise me all that much. Still zero renters in Sunnyside East. That is kind of a crazy statistic, unless maybe just the numbers are so low that they can't really quantify it. So, okay, that's what I got for this part. I'm gonna hop over into Sunnyside East from Cox and Pros and Cons, let's go. All right, my friends, right now I'm in a neighborhood that does a very good example of showing what's going on in Sunnyside East. I said it earlier, but you're very much more down, you know, in the valley in Sunnyside East, and it's not very big, there's not a ton of homes, um, but they are beautiful, overwhelmingly, very, very nicely maintained, and a lot of like variety of character. You'll see as I walk down the street, but the homes from home to home are very, very different. Not to say you might not see, you know, two Colonials or two Tudors or something on the same street, but uh, yeah, from house to house, there's a lot of variety. So 
something I really enjoy. I love sort of uh, historic architecture, but I also love that like epic architecture <laughs> up in the up in the uh, foothills, right? So we're here. We're talking about pros and cons of living in both of these neighborhoods. There is some variety between the two, but I'll, I'll dive into that. You probably know what I'm going to say for the first pro good schools, right? I say that almost every video, but not, not everywhere has good schools. But generally, very solid, B plus, A minus, almost across the board. Um, again, depends a little bit on which neighborhood, but I think you can't really go wrong, right? Generally, very good schools. Uh, second, I'm gonna say is nice, peaceful, quiet neighborhoods. And that goes for both spots, you know? The, maybe the neighborhood feel, the trick-or-treatable feel is stronger here, right? Uh, whereas East Bench, it's a little more epic homes. Whereas East Bench, you're gonna get a little bit less of that neighborhood feel. Not to say they aren't, uh, not to say that the people who live there might not be neighborly, but uh, not the trick-or-treatable feel as it's, you know, in the foothills, it's hilly. It's, it's just gonna feel differently than that. Yeah, so quiet, beautiful neighborhoods, like every house here is beautifully maintained. You're not driving past, you know, something that's a total mess to get to your home. Generally, <clears throat> very, very nice. And that's true of both spots. And then, yeah, but you know, of the different sort of variety of homes between the two spots. You have the sort of beautiful historic homes down here in Sunnyside East, and then the more epic, like, you know, glass-laden homes uh, <laughs> up in East Bench. And then uh, sort of next pro uh, is basically great access to the outdoors, right? There's not a ton of like municipal parks in the area, but you have access to great trails in the East Bench neighborhood, and I mean here too, but the trails are like right there if you're in East Bench. Um, and then there are, there is, you know, the park I was at earlier. You also have the zoo, which I think I will go to in a moment. And yeah, nice, a couple little municipal parks hanging out uh, in the Sunnyside East neighborhood as well and then just the best views right some of the some of the coolest views in all of salt lake city i think i already said that but yeah like the sunsets from east bench whew, really really beautiful and then last pro i mean there's definitely going to be others but last like main pro i'm going to say is convenient access you know even though we're all the way on the eastern edge of salt lake city proper you still have very convenient access to downtown you have convenient access to the airport and actually more convenient access to the university here than almost any other neighborhood aside from maybe university uh but yeah just very very conveniently located especially to the mountains especially to downtown yeah it's really slick but then let's hop over to cons what are the what are the kind of bad parts or the, the negatives um first of all i would never in a million years call this a bad neighborhood so <laughs> don't think i'm about to say anything like that but first con it's expensive right the homes here generally pretty expensive and yeah considerably higher than the median and the barrier for entry pretty high it's not like some spots where you know the median is high but there is like a pretty affordable barrier for entry eh, for the most part just to get into either of these neighborhoods it's going to be considerably higher than the median so aside from just being expensive what else is there sometimes i feel like expensive is the only con and that's tough because then i'm trying to think of other things that you know people might not be into and it can be tough but um i think there are a few here one of which is there are uh, very minimal amenities within the borders of these two neighborhoods but then even still just outside there's not that many super super close i think a lot of your like errands you're gonna have to go to sugar house or somewhere else uh to do those and now that's not far right sugar house is not like a long way away from here but nonetheless you're likely going to be leaving for the majority of your errands right uh third con is that even beyond you know errands just speaking in terms of like doing fun stuff you know going to hip uh, shops or restaurants or cafes or coffee shops or whatever 
you're mostly, again, going to be leaving the, the borders of these two neighborhoods to do any of that. And there's some some cool stuff, and I don't want to discount, you know, how, how great those handful of places are, but it is pretty sparse in general. I would say East Bench particularly. East Bench has very few commercial <laughs> anything, right? So uh, con number four is that there's not a ton of inventory, right? Especially in Sunnyside East, as we speak, one home on the market, that's <laughs> not exactly easy. Uh, not, <laughs> not easy to find a home when there's one home on the market in, the, in an area. But just after this, I will tell you some sort of neighborhoods to check out that might do the trick for you, right? The four fans of section, if you have been watching these videos. So there, there's a lot of stuff that's gonna feel very, very similar. Uh, so yeah, it's, well, I'll give you some other options that if you like this area, then definitely check out those, but stick around for that. Then I'm gonna dive into a con that I think really only applies to Sunnyside East, where we are again currently, which is basically cons. It's the sort of stuff that I would categorize as like cons associated with living in like an urban area. So for one, you know, stuff like the, the likelihood of finding an attached garage goes down considerably. The homes tend to be smaller. The yards tend to be smaller. And you're way more likely to see, you know, cars parked on the street in front of a home, which again, is just something that we find people they don't like, right? So some people move to a suburb to avoid stuff like that. Um, that said, it's <laughs> it would not deter me. It's still a beautiful neighborhood and the homes are immaculate and there, there are some pretty sizable stately homes in this area, but I would say in general, on average, you're getting a little bit less square footage than if you paid the same amount of money in a suburb, but then you're in a suburb, right? So then I'll jump over to cons, I would say, that really only apply to East Bench. And ultimately, it's just, I would say, cons that are associated with living in the foothills, right? Which is stuff like uh, steep access roads, right? So sometimes to get up to certain parts of the neighborhood, you're kind of going up a windy or steep street, right? So not as trick-or-treatable as well for that reason. Also, sometimes, and this is not you know ubiquitous not true across the board but uh, a lot of the time the yards in those neighborhoods aren't going to be quite as usable you might have like a good little front yard then sometimes you'll have a good backyard but there's a higher likelihood of the yard being uh, like tough because you're on such a steep slope right it might not even be something you mow which <laughs> could be helpful um but yeah just not as like you know yardy a yard if, if that makes sense Alright y'all, right here is the Hogel Zoo. And this is in technically in the Sunnyside East neighborhood. I feel conflicted about zoos in general, <laughs> so I'm not gonna talk too much in depth about the zoo. Y'all can feel however you wanna feel about them. Uh, but in general, like this is here, takes up a pretty good chunk of the land that is available here. Um, but as far as zoos go, there's a kid on a leash back there, by the way. Uh, as far as zoos go, oh, weird. Uh, there's, you know, beautiful views, a very beautiful setting, and tons of parking and, and all that. So, uh, you know, if you are into going to zoos, then proximity to this zoo, I mean, doesn't get any better than these areas for sure. And even if you're not even thinking about these areas, I guess good to know it's here. It's, you know, downtown is basically, you know, 10 minutes that way, super, super easy to get to. And you're also right at basically the canyon. So you could take basically this road all the way up Emigration Canyon, beautiful drive, 
Anyhow, before I dive into the sort of for fans of section, the sort of other areas that you might want to consider, I just want to say that if you are thinking about making a move here, then we would love to be the ones who help you find the right home in the right neighborhood for the right price. So get a hold of us and we will crush it for you. We'll work our butts off for you. Uh, you can go to our website, welcome to saltlakecity.co. We have a contact form there that you can fill out in literally moments, or you can shoot us an email directly to info at welcome to saltlakecity.co. And if it feels maybe a little too early to reach out, maybe you're still kicking tires, maybe you're still wrapping your head around it, then just uh, go hang out with us on Instagram if you want at welcome to Salt Lake City. Okay, let's dive in to the four fans of section, which is to say, if you like what you see here in Sunnyside East and East Bench, then maybe check out these other spots. Usually people are looking in multiple neighborhoods when they're moving here, because there's a bunch of spots that sort of do the trick. So that's kind of where this comes in. Let me help you expand that search if you like what you see here. I feel like I'm sort of, sort of gonna have two sections, one of which is if you want the sort of East Bench, epic view, epic house neighborhood, then cool. Here's kind of the two spots that come to mind that aren't suburbs, right, that are neighborhoods within Salt Lake. The first of which is the avenues, specifically the upper avenues, and the second of which is Capitol Hill, specifically the, <laughs> the higher part up of Capitol Hill, the further north section of Capitol Hill when you're looking at, at it on a map. Both just gorgeous views, insane city views, amazing sunsets, and yeah, really, really good spots. Uh, I think both of which may be a little more expensive than East Bench, but not too bad and not really that much more expensive. And then if you're looking for the more in the valley, just like neighborhood, like proper kind of neighborhood, old school neighborhood, uh, like mostly like what's in Sunnyside East, then I would say check out Bonneville Hills, Wasatch Hollow. We have a video where we combine both of those very, very similar um, kind of housing stock, very similar lifestyle, similar prices. And then the other one would be Yalecrest. And Yalecrest, again, very similar for a lot of reasons. Even a lot of the sort of amenities for Sunnyside East and East Bench are gonna be the same amenities that you're gonna be using if you live in those other neighborhoods. So definitely very good spots, very beautiful homes, and very similar lifestyle. So that's kind of why, you know, those are all good options if that's what you're looking for. But hey, this has been a virtual tour of Sunnyside East and East Bench, Salt Lake City. I hope you've enjoyed. If you've not done so yet, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified. And I would love it, I would appreciate it so much if you'd leave a comment and give the video a thumbs up. In the comment, I don't know, how about your thoughts on zoos? I, that's, a, that's a good discussion to have in the comments. I'm very curious, uh, how do you feel about it, you know? But all right, we did it. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.